Donald Rumsfeld put himself back in the news today. He said, and I'm, I'm quoting now, the administration, the White House, and the State Department has failed to get a status of forces agreement. A trained ape could get a status of forces agreement. It does not take a genius. Former U.S. Secretary of Defense Donald Rumsfeld mincing no words, talking about President Barack Obama, or Barry Sotoro, to be more accurate. With us tonight is a, a senior statesman, one of the world's most respected Americans, Lyndon LaRouche. It's been a number of years since Lynn has been on the program. He continues to do remarkable things nonstop on his website, which you can get to simply by clicking on his name at rents.com in the guest section. Do visit his site and take advantage of the marvelous material there. If you're not online now, just remember LaRouchePack.com. L-A-R-O-U-C-H-E-P-A-C.com. LaRouchePack.com. Really a first-class news site. Lyndon, welcome back to the program. How are you? Well, I'm about approaching 92 years, and uh, I'm friskier than ever before. So you're still causing lots of trouble. Glad to hear it. (laughs) (laughs) Trouble with the people that need to have trouble caused for them. Years and years ago, uh, I don't know when you were first on the program. It's got to be 15 years ago, but it has been a while since we talked. And the last time we talked, we talked about the the felon in chief, the fraud in the Oval Office, uh, the man who should not be king, although don't tell him that. And how it was crucial for America to get get rid of this guy. Whatever mechanism the law allows for, he's got to go. He is unilaterally, as you have heroically reported for decades, it's come to this. He is unilaterally dismantling the republic, taking it down to gutter status. And uh, unless he has stopped, he and his cadre, I fear for the future. How does it look to you now? Well, we're on the edge of a thermonuclear war. Uh, There's been talk about local issues in Europe, such as the question of what's happened with Russia and its Nazi neighbors, Mm -hmm. which is this Ukrainian pseudo-government, which is a real threat. Uh, But the key issue is, there is an issue which is affecting everybody in the United States and also in the transatlantic region. That is where what happened is, with the advent of the end of the Clinton administration, we brought in what was actually the Dick Cheney administration. The name Bush was simply decoration. Cheney was the real architect of all the policies of any significance, including 9-11. The ninth, that is the suppression of 9-11 was done essentially by Cheney. Indeed. The operation was actually done actually by the British monarchy as an imperial agency with uh, things like particularly Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia actually did Mm 9-11, and Dick Cheney was the guy who uh, actually suppressed and caused the suppression of the evidence almost to the present day. A lot of us know the whole story. I know pretty much the whole story, Mm -hmm. but uh, we're not allowed to, shall we say, in government, to even mention what the truth is. Uh, that's, that's, so that's uh, where we are. 100% correct. Now, let me, let me go back to this, this, uh, this creature uh, in the White House, who apparently in the office above the Oval Office sits chain smokes, although he's supposedly trying to quit now with a nicotine patch, and watches his big screen TV sports uh, with his boyfriends. Uh, and this is what we have sitting in the hallowed halls of the Republic of the United States of America. A more disgraceful image uh, as president I could not conjure up. Uh, I'm sure that your friends in Europe agree that uh, the man is not only disgraceful, but he, he certainly could be quite dangerous. Yes, yeah, so the problem, see, the problem is that about, I think, about 75% of the U.S. population hates this guy. That's pretty much a fair estimate among citizens. Yes. The, pro- the problem is the citizens have been, for recent years, have been so put down and crushed, and they're being crushed more and more all the time. Therefore, while they hate Obama, 
and hate things that go with them, and they hate Bobby Cheney less only because uh, Cheney was the author of what Obama aggravated. Uh -huh. But this, uh, this problem is, is that they're frightened. However, now we've come to a point where we're on the edge of actually a thermonuclear war. That is, if Obama, together with his British master, mm -hmm. actually goes ahead with what they intend to do, we could be in a global thermonuclear war. Now, from such a war, there is no possibility of security of future lives. If people were to survive such a war, they would regret that they hadn't been killed first, because the conditions would be horrible. Well, so add, uh, yes, add in uh, Fukushima to a thermonuclear war, and you have an extinction-level event. Exactly. Well, we were already in the end of it. The problem is this. What happened is when Glass-Steagall was canceled, which had began the real evil, and Bill Clinton had been put and set up in various ways, so he was essentially discredited. By doing that, and bringing in a Bush administration, though young Bush wasn't worth anything, but he Still had a man, Dick, <laughs> Dick Cheney. Yeah. Dick Cheney was actually the, the emperor of the United States government at that time. Mm -hmm. He was the guy who covered up 9-11, for example, which he knew exactly who did it. It was the Saudis with, with British backing. That who did 9-11, and I can prove that. But the point is here, so this, we had a, we gone through a hyperinflationary process, which was launched under the Bush-Cheney administration and continued under Obama. This has destroyed the standard of living of our people. But our people are so terrified that they won't fight. They hate, they hate Obama. As I say, about 75% of the citizens actually hate Obama. Right. But they won't fight. They're intimidated. And also they face conditions of life, which under Obama and following Cheney is the worst conditions that the United States has suffered in a very long time. So the, the problem is the need for leadership to get us out of this mess, to throw Obama out of office. He actually is very impeachable. Throw him out of office, mm -hmm. impeach him, mm -hmm. get him out. And if we go to Glass-Steagall and some other methods which I'm working on, we can't actually, it's not, you're not going to have a miracle. The miracle is you're going to turn around. But what's happening now with the solar development, that is the, the sun is quiet. That means that entire, the entirety of the western half of the United States is now in the process of losing its ability to prove what it used to be is food supply. So therefore we need a, we need Glass-Steagall. Mm -hmm. simply to save the United States, to stop the bleeding. Mm -hmm. But we also need a program of high in uh, intelligence uh, capability, mm -hmm. uh, and that will enable us to recover. So we're in, a, we're in a crisis of two dimensions. One is to stop what's happening now, including the threat of the nuclear war. Get Obama out of it, and I can guarantee you, we're probably not going to go to the war. But if Obama remains president, even though he's only maybe a stooge, He's a stooge of the British monarchy, which is behind the whole thing. So if we don't get him out of office, we are in deadly danger. So that, that, that's our situation. Yeah. Uh, we have options. I know options that were, were cures and so forth. Some other people also share my views. But this is the situation. We're on a very crucial moment, and our American citizens have to be awakened and, and risen not only to how bad things are, that they already know, but to know that there is a possibility of organizing a recovery and starting it very soon. When we talk about 75% of Americans not just disliking but hating this man, uh, we're correct. It's a visceral hatred. 71% of those who voted to reelect him have finally figured out how stupid they are. So it's, uh, it's really something that I've never seen the likes of which before. I mean, we may talk about Richard Nixon and how everybody hated him because of Watergate. He looks like a Cub Scout compared to what's going on now. <laughs> Uh, this this situation that you so uh, elegantly have have laid out for us is is extremely dangerous. Do you recall, uh, Lynn, in your long life of of watching politics, uh, a more worthy man to be hated than the one in the White House? This guy has seized the reins of of power. Well, actually, he's a targeted Ben in the sense he's taking the blame for what is being done by others. Of mm -hmm. course, he's fully complicit in what he's doing. 
Yeah. But he's not he's not really running the show. The, oh, uh, the we, show uh, is, yes, that's understood. We're right with you on that, believe me. But he is the figurehead, and that's all I'm talking about. But go that's ahead. right. He, what, he, what he is, uh, Cheney was really a factor. He still is a factor. I mean, he look, Cheney is the guy who backed up this whole Nazi organization which took over Ukraine. I've heard that. I mean, it, it, yeah. Uh, he is a Nazi. These are Nazis. This was the a group which was Adolf Hitler's uh, Ukrainian team, which were among the worst killers of Jews and Poles and so forth in that period. Oh, you, and you this mean, is the same organization, mm -hmm. exactly the same organization. You mentioned something interesting. You mentioned Poland, and let me switch back to Europe now. There are a couple of things. One, apparently in, in Britain, and the story I got today was that Poles who are living in Britain now, who are of military age, are being called up. Uh, which I thought was rather noteworthy, although no one noted it, really. It just kind of came and went. Uh, this is something that, that suggests that the West is beginning to at least rattle its saber a little bit in terms of real hardcore assets. 15,000 Ukrainian military people now have gone over to the Russian side in Crimea. They are now officially in the Russian, uh, at least a, a detachment of the Russian military, shall we say. You also said that, that Europe was involved in this potential war situation. Now, I'm, I, you know Europe extremely well. I'm still trying to figure out how much of Europe is actually left, Lynn, when you consider the massive influx, the intentional influx of, of millions upon millions of non-assimilatable illegal aliens, immigrants, whatever you want to call them over there. They're having the same problem there as we are here. How much of Europe is really a factor, or is it just a shadow expression of the bankster cartel headquartered in the city of London? No, it's actually, yeah, it is London, but it's also Wall Street. Wall of Street course. is an extension. Yes. It's an extension of London. Yes. And yes. what you've had is you had, it, what happened is, you, for example, let's take the state of Texas. You have Prescott Bush, who was the guy who bailed out Hitler from going to jail. And just in time for Hitler to take over power and start killing people. But what happened is then Prescott Bush went down to where it had been a Democratic Party state, solidly. And gradually they took that over and made it a Republican state, which is quite interesting. But what happened is in this process, we, we actually destroyed the, our system of government. And the Bush family, mm -hmm. that is Prescott Bush and his two uh, son and grandson, mm -hmm. were not necessarily the bosses in this thing, but they became the figureheads who were very significant in of organizing course. this thing. Right. So the problem is, in, but the Bushes are essentially a part of the extended British imperial system. Like Wall Street is a part of the general British imperial system. It is an empire, a real empire. Now what's happened is this. To get to the gist of the matter, what has happened is what once they shut down Glass Steagall, which was done at the end of the, of the Clinton administration, what they did is they went into a process called bailout, which is a gambling process, it's a complete swindle. Mm -hmm. There's no justification for it whatsoever. It's not a mistake. It's not this. It's an outright swindle. Mm -hmm. So we had trillions of dollars, more than trillions of dollars, of funny money being accumulated over the period from the time of the Cheney administration's beginning mm -hmm. to the present time. Now, at the end of this present past year, we now entered in a point where they're going from a process which they called bail out, which was in the hyperinflationary process in the transatlantic community. They've now gone to a process called bail in. I'll tell you what this effect is, just simply. Mm -hmm. If you imagine an elevator at the 70th floor of a skyscraper, and you imagine that the cable of that elevator suddenly broke. It accelerates downward, down to below the basement. What's happening now is we have a bail-in process, which is in London, and it's in the United States, it's especially in Wall Street. Mm -hmm. What is happening, whatever else happens, if this system continues, very soon the United States and the 